everybody and welcome to today's video. My name is Jess and in today's video we're going to be talking all about the author Lisa Jewell and all of the books that I've read from her. So it's probably going to be a long one so grab a snack and keep on watching. So the reason why I chose to do this video is because Lisa Jewell is one of my top five favorite authors who Literally, pretty much almost every book that they put out, I will read. And so some of the reasons why that I love her is because, and her books is because of her writing style. I think she writes, her books are entertaining. I think her writing style is very fluid. It's fast paced. She knows how to really capture you in. Uh, she does a really good job of fleshing out her characters and making sure they're very well developed and that you're actually invested in the characters, regardless of if you like them or not. So I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you guys will also enjoy her as well or be inspired to check out any of these other books from her that I've mentioned. So I have about eight books that I'm going to be talking about um, and I've ranked them from one to eight. So I'm going to start with my least favorite and work my way up. So number eight and number seven on my list, I don't have the physical copy of them. I pick them up from the library and typically when I get a book from the library, if I like it, then I will purchase it and put it on my shelves that way. In case I ever want to read it again, I can. Um, number eight and number seven, I did not want to purchase <laughs> and have in my collection. Uh, so number eight is The House We Grew Up In. And this one is a family drama about there's a mom, a dad, and four children. And the mom has mental illness. Uh, she's a hoarder and she's also an abuser. And throughout the story, we also um, read these letters that she has written and so we get to know her character um and then we have um the four children who have experienced some really traumatizing things in their lives and a tragedy happens and they're now adults and they have to figure out how to be well-adjusted adults in society and it's really hard for them because of things that they experienced in their past and the reason why this one is number eight on my list is just that it was a sad book um and there's a time and a place for sad books i'm not against sad books there are books that i if i want to read or if i want to cry i will read those books this one to me was an, a, a sad that made me uncomfortable, I guess you can say. For warning in this book, there they talk a lot about severe child abuse and mental illness. So if that's something that does make you uncomfortable, I think maybe skip this one. Um, but if that doesn't and you're okay with reading about it, then you might have a different opinion about this book for me. For me, it's a two out of five stars. So not a horrible book. I just probably won't ever reread it. So then we have number seven on the list and that one is The Girls in the Garden. The synopsis of this book really, really intrigued me, but unfortunately I thought it missed the mark a bit. In this book there's a housing complex and in the center of it there is a garden and all of the families and all of the children they play in the garden and they hang out and they get up to some stuff and um, this girl she ends up being murdered on her 13th birthday and fast forward in time 10 years later a family um, the mother's name is Claire and she has two daughters and they move they move to the housing complex and at first everything is it is cool um, but then they start learning more and more about the families who live there and they find out 
you know, these people have secrets, they're part of, they have these little cliques going on, and then they find out about the, the unsolved murder that happened 10 years prior. And, you know, so, I, there's two characters in particular that I just did not like, and that was Adele and Claire. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I'm a mom of three children, and while I don't judge other mothers, and of course these are fictional characters, there's just things that they did as a mother that I was just like, okay, you can't bury your head in the sand. Like, get it together, come on. Um, the only redeeming character in this book I felt like was Pip. There was just also some, you know, some stuff that the, the kids you know, do that just reading it kind of made me a little bit uncomfortable. I don't know if that's from a parenting perspective, but it did. Um, not like, not too horribly uncomfortable, but just, just a little bit. Um, there were parts where I did feel like the book, especially in the beginning, was a bit slower, uh, slow paced, and it did pick up, but it was probably about, I'd, I'd give it about a two to two and a half stars uh, so just a bit better than than the other one <laughs> number six on the list is the book I found you this one is not as dark as some of her other books um, it's still a mystery there's still a murder you know it's still a bit suspenseful at, at some intervals at the very end I feel like um, but so this one is about Alice and she finds a man. Um, so she has a cottage and she lives on the beach and she finds a man sitting alone on the beach one day and it's raining out and he's not dressed very well. And, you know, she's intrigued by the stranger. So she invites her, she, she invites him into her home and she discovers that this man has no clue who he is or where he is how he got there, um, he has amnesia, he doesn't know anything. So then there's another storyline of this girl named Lily, and Lily, she, uh, her husband goes to work one day and then vanishes, like he disappears, and so obviously she calls the cops, and so the cops investigate, and then they find out that this man doesn't exist. There's no one by that name. He's never he's fake um so I laugh but you gotta feel kind of bad for her um and then there's another storyline of Gray and Christy and their brother and sister and with their parents they go on a summer holiday and while on this holiday there's a man who becomes really interested in Christy and it makes Gray uncomfortable because he just doesn't get the best vibes from this man and you know that's his sister he obviously has to watch out for her and so none of these storylines seem like they might actually fit together um, you might think one thing but really it's another um, but Lisa Joel she does a really good job of tying all of these storylines together I was able to kind of figure out what happens at the end before it did but it didn't bother me that much that I was able to figure it out. Um, I thought it was a, like I said, a light heart, like a more light version of the books that she normally, she normally writes. So that one, I would give it, I would give it a three and a half stars out of five. I, I really enjoyed it. So then on the flip side of that one, that one was, was one of her lighter books. On the flip side, the next book that I'm going to talk about is a lot darker and twisted and a lot of you have probably heard of this one. It's one of her more famous books. Um, so probably some of you are going to be surprised that it's, it's a little, not low on my list, but I did prefer other ones to it and I think because it is so dark that's why it is kind of like my middle, middle of the road for her. Um, and I don't have the physical copy of the book. I used to. I had no idea what happened to it. Um, we live in an apartment 
and we've moved so many times that I have no idea where it ended up, um, which really sucks and makes me sad. But this book is called The Family Upstairs, and there's a lot of names and there's a lot of there's a lot of things happening in this book. So it's told from three different people's perspectives and it's also told in the past and the present. So there's Libby, Lucy, and Henry. Okay, so 25 years ago in the past, there the police are called out to this residence because there is a crying baby. And when they get there, they discover a 10 month old is a baby is alone. And downstairs in the kitchen, there is three bodies. And there's four children who are supposed to reside in the home. Um, and they're, they're missing, they've disappeared. Um, so fast forward, the book starts off with Libby who is now 25 years old. She is, so she's actually the 10 month old baby um, who was adopted and now Libby at 25, she is left her inheritance and part of her inheritance is that house, the mansion. And so there's also, so also in the past, I told you there's, there's a lot going on. So in the past, there is the Lamb family and the Lamb family. So there's the mom, the dad, and there is Henry and Lucy. And the mom and the dad, they let this man named David and his family uh, move in. And at first David is a charmer. Obviously that's how he got into the, you know, got into the house and to let live there. But then slowly, David becomes the antagonist of the story and he is evil. So we see from Henry's point of view, you know, the, the family, like their family. And then there's also Lucy's perspective. So she is a single mom with two children and she, they're also homeless. And so on the 25th year mark, when she discovers that the baby is 25, she's now 25 years old, she returns home. This is definitely a more dark book, in my opinion. There is a lot of trigger warnings that need to be said for this book. There is a lot of, there's rape, suicide, there's abuse, incest, um, in, or animal abuse, you name it, it, it might be in this book. So keep that in mind if you are going to check this one out. I do think it's worth the read. Um, it can be a bit confusing, but I think it's worth it. And because so many fans have loved this book, she's actually doing, she actually did a sequel to this book and it's called The Family Remains. Uh, it came out this year, if I'm not mistaken, and I have yet to check it out. Um, I will eventually. Um, I just have so many books on my TBR list right now that that one's not a huge priority for me to read. Um, I want to get through some of my other ones first, but I will read that one. And if I do, I will update you guys and let you know what I think about that one too. So up next, number four on our list, we have The Night She Disappeared. Now this book it's gotten a lot of mixed reviews online. I personally liked it. So this one, there is Tallulah and Zach. They're 19 year olds and they have a one year old son and they live with Tallulah's mom, Kim. And one day they want to go out on a date, you know, and it's their first date that they've gone on since they had the baby. And they, li they, li they leave the baby with Kim and they go out and they have a good time, but they never come back home. Now, Zach's parents don't care. They they could give two shits. Uh, Kim though, you know, she's, she's up the police's butt and she's like, come on, what's going on? Where's my daughter? I want to find out what happened to her. But the case goes cold. The police just think that it's a case of 
Tallulah and Zach, you know, had too much responsibility on their plate and they ran away. And Kim doesn't believe this. She knows her motherly instinct. She knows Tallulah would never leave her baby. And, but there were secrets that Tallulah was keeping from everyone. And we find those out because the story goes back in time. So it goes back and forth between Tallulah in the past and then Kim's perspective in the future, well, in the present. And in the past, um, we get to see all of, you know, Tallulah's relationship with her mother, with Zach. She goes, she's in college and while she's in school, she meets a couple new friends, one girl in particular named Scarlett. Uh, she is important to the story and I hate her. <laughs> um, I did not like her character, uh, which she's well written. And that's the reason why, like, I don't like her. Um, so anyway, um, and then there's also a random storyline of, there's a writer named Sophie and her and her boyfriend moved to town and he is a professor at the college that Tallulah went to. And so they rent a cottage on the edge of the, like right outside of the, 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 the college. And while Sophie's there, she is walking around the property and she comes across this sign that says dig here. So of course she digs there and she finds um, something that links to Tallulah's disappearance. And she ends up showing it to Kim, which they obviously then give it to the police and it opens up the, the missing case and What's really great about this book is that the beginning and the middle are a bit slower, but then at the very end, the chapters are written in a way that they're left on a bit of a cliffhanger. And so you're frantically trying to read as fast as you can to figure out what's happening. So because you're finding out what's happening to Tallulah and then you're also finding out what Kim is discovering about Tallulah. So I give this one a four out of five stars. Um, I just realized that I didn't rate the other book, um, The Family Upstairs, and I would give that one a three, three and a half out of five stars. So next up on my list is a book that I think probably most of you might have seen or read before, and that is Watching You. This one is uh, takes place in Melville Heights and it starts off with we see that there is a murder. We don't know who, we don't know um, who, who was murdered, we don't know who did it or anything like that. So what we do know is that a family moves into town. There is Tom Fitzgerald and he is the new principal. He is there to fix the school. There is also his wife Nicola who's an avid runner, and then there is their son named Freddy, who is a bit weird. Uh, he likes to watch his neighbors, and then he also likes to uh, take pictures of them. And we also meet Joey, and Joey is this young girl who is married to this guy named Alfie, and she moves in with her brother Jack and his wife. And Rebecca and they all they live only a couple houses down from Tom and so Joey uh, she runs into Tom and she immediately becomes infatuated with him she develops this huge crush on him it's a bit it's a bit weird to me how quickly she becomes infatuated with this man but she does and then there's also this girl named Jenna who goes to, she's a student at the school where Tom is a principal and Jenna's mother also happens to have a crush on Tom and so does her best friend named Bess. And Tom, Jenna doesn't like Tom. She also gets a weird vibe from him, especially because he gives kind of unwanted attention, I think, to Bess. And so I really like this book. You think one thing and then there's another thing that happens. There's a twist in it that I liked that I didn't see coming, which is always good for me. I like a book that when there's a twist, I don't see it coming. 
I give this one a, a solid four out of five stars as well. I think you guys should check it out. Um, so number two on the list is not a popular book from her. At least I don't, I don't see very many people talking about it. And that is Invisible Girl. Uh, this one is, is told from a few different perspectives. Uh, there's Sapphire, which I think I'm pr pronouncing her name. I'm probably pronouncing her name wrong. Um, but Saf, she started seeing a psychologist when she was about 12 years old, and the psychologist's name is Dr. Ronan Four. And the doctor ends up dismissing her as a patient, and she becomes obsessed with him. She starts um, stalking him, stalking his family, and then outside of their house, she actually goes missing and she she gets murdered and so the story is also told from Kate's point of view and Kate is Ronan's wife she gets interested into the story because she they they discover the body like I said outside of like near her home she instantly thinks that it's one of the neighbors who lives um, across the street and his name is Owen and Owen is a teacher who was recently fired for sexual misconduct and he's a bit gross and creepy and weird he creeps Kate out um, and he's even her daughter has even said that he she thinks that he has followed her home from the train and so of course in her mind she's like yes Owen did this so she becomes invest invested in the story as well and so we see how this all gets weaved together for me, I really like psychological thrillers. I'm gonna give this one a 4.5 out of stars. I really enjoyed it. I'm not sure why it's not talked about more, um, but I hope you guys pick this one up. I think you'll like it. And number one on the list, if you're a Lisa Jewell fan, then this probably won't come as any surprise to you. I'm sure a lot of you have seen this book being recommended probably last year. I think it was it was pretty hyped up, or maybe it was the year before that. I can't remember, but I did see it a lot online, and for good reason, and that is Then She Was Gone. So, like I said, this is my number one pick. It is about Laurel, who is the mom of a girl named Ellie, and Ellie disappears, and the case goes cold, and Laurel doesn't accept that. She becomes pretty obsessed with her daughter's disappearance and it basically consumes her. Well, one day she runs into this man named Floyd and they hit it off really good and they end up starting to date and she meets Floyd's daughter, Poppy. And Poppy is a spitting image of Ellie and that throws Laurel and I'm not gonna give anything away but we do end up finding out what happened to Ellie and clearly it all relates to everything that's going on and I really I was really surprised with the ending of the book and I was really I really really liked this one I give this one a five out of five stars I think it's well worth the hype I think you guys should check this one out so that's gonna do it for today's video you guys if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to put out videos every Wednesday and Friday. And be sure to check out my Instagram. My handle is at JessicaAmber underscore book review. So I hope I see you guys in the next video. Bye!